for more Twaddle content from Aeon of Horrors. This one's called Kamiju Toma's Sad Past Slash Childhood Removed from Season 1. I think there's important flashback and lore about Tomo in the past regarding how he couldn't save a girl. This is a thing that he repeats often in arc one or something in the prologue, right? I'm trying to think of like, why is he so motivated? Like, why does he do stuff like this? I still don't know. The anime doesn't tell us, but hey, Aeon of Horus might. What's up, guys? So today I want to cover a very important detail. Bro, the light novel cover art, if this is not the manga, has even more aura from the dad. Look at that look back. Holy shit. That scene from the anime was already epic, but god damn, this is making him look so menacing. ...that was completely cut out of the anime of a certain magical index for no reason at all, and that is concerning the backstory of Kamijo Toma that was revealed to us by Toma's father, Toya, Toya. during the Angel Fall arc in Old Testament. Goodness gracious me, they are whoring out Kanzaki like no other in the cover picks. Volume 4. So, if you've already read this volume, this information won't be anything new to you. But if you haven't, then I'm sure you will find this very interesting and might even improve Toma's character for you if you're only familiar with the anime. Let's be- Yeah, there's definitely like stuff that he does that I can't really understand really why. He has like this super strong sense of justice. He obsesses over saving Index yet. He doesn't really have anything really for Index other than they just showed up and you know they had a cute moment and then he talks about how he couldn't like save like a single person before. This is like something that's reiterated before, you know, Angel Fall Arc. And during Angel Fall Arc, was there more actions that Toma was doing that was a bit confusing without this? Begin. So, as I said, a section of Toma's past is revealed to us by Toma's dad, Kamijo Toya. All right, the other stuff, the cut content I think he's alluding to is how Toma was perceived to be like an outcast due to his powers. I think a lot of the people were afraid and were kind of just pretty much treating him like a heretic, like you, someone that you shouldn't exist. And then dad sent Toma to Academy City in hopes of, I don't know, resolving the situation. But it turns out that's not even possible here either. During a talk he gives to his son during the Angel Fall arc concerning the Angel Fall spell. This is obviously after the first volume of Index, where at the end of that arc, Toma lost his memories of his past, and of course this included the memories he had growing up before mm -hmm. he moved to Academy City to become an Esper. I wonder if this is going to be permanent. Erasing Toma's backstory all like that and creating this like new Toma who is still Toma at the essence of his soul but lost all those important memories like won't this like change who he is entirely as he continues to progress through the story? Won't those past memories not have any weight because he's forgotten? Will those memories return with Index doing stuff or maybe there'll be a very precarious situation where Toma does shit and later on maybe there is a way to get the memories back and once he does get the memories back there'll be this huge conflict in his own head due to the actions that he's committed versus the I don't know, the principles and the ideology he holds due to those memories. And now that he got it back, maybe there's like an internal struggle. Toya informed Toma that when Toma was a child, the other children and their parents around them called Toma the god of pestilence. Basically calling <laughs> pestilence. him a disease or a plague. Jesus. This is because people believed Toma was cursed with bad luck and he would spread it to those around him. How many instances of bad luck did people see for the entire fucking village to just outcast him like this? This is so extreme. Toya stated in the volume, The children believed that just by having you around, others gained misfortune. Because they believed that, they would throw rocks at you just because they saw you. The fuck? And the adults did not stop them. When they saw your injuries... It yeah, we should just burn down this entire fucking town. Wherever Toma grew up from, like, what kind? I need to know exactly what happened that would make kids act like this and the adults to act like this, too. Like, this is such an extreme case. I cannot fathom what would compel these people to do it. A simple unlucky event? What happened? Does simply just being around Toma cause, like, car accidents for a bunch of other kids nearby? It's just, like, a repeated thing that happened over and over. Other people are actually dying because of Toma? In that case, then I could believe it. But without that knowledge, it seems ridiculous. It did not make them sad. It instead made them sneer at you. 
they would urge the kids to hurt you even worse. The children believed that when you left, their misfortune would also leave, because they believed that they would avoid you. Even the adults believed that. Do you remember, Toma? A man buried in debt once chased you around with a knife trying to stab you. Jesus. When the TV stations heard about it, they used a paranormal show as an excuse to show your face on TV without permission and treat you like a monster. What? Wait. A man buried in debt? He, he, he mistook Tomo for the loan sharks? Why? Okay, some crazy dude. And then when the TV stations heard about it, they wanted to make content out of him and used him as a mo They just demonized this kid. The t in this one specific event, like, I don't know at this point people already hated Tomo or not, but if this is like the start of it, that's crazy that this TV station went out of the way to do this. Show your face on TV what without fuck? permission and treat you like a monster. That is why I sent you to Academy City. Bro. I don't know if the churches in Toadu has these, but you know the executors that exist in Fate series? The executors show up to that town and just fucking eliminate them. What a- they are the pestilence. Those people are the disease among society. Where are my executors at? City. I was scared. I wasn't scared of the whole fortune and misfortune thing. I was scared of the reality that people would act violently towards you as if it was the natural thing to do, just because they believed in that. It's crazy. You simply existing means that you're bad and we're gonna kill you. I don't know what those people are doing back at Tomo's hometown, but oh my god, they deserve a fate worse than death and true. Like, and I'm surprised that Toma turned out pretty okay. I don't even think that he's really an asshole either in Arc 1. Was there an event that made me think that Toma was being outlandish and just mean? I don't think so. He seems to just kind of always say, oh, it's my luck, and he has to deal with a bunch of bullshit, and if anything, he was very self-righteous and had the sense of justice. Re um, coming back to that theme of I wasn't able to save another girl, like a single girl I wasn't even saved, like, yeah, if I was Toma, like any part, like this is straight up like a villain origin story, man. End quote. And from this conversation, it is also revealed- He did hang around Aogami and Shimikado. What are you saying? Are you implying that Aogami and Shimikado are such degenerates, just trash of society, that simply being hanging around them is basically proving how much of an asshole Toma is? Damn, what the fuck are they getting stray bullets? Feel that Toya assembled the different souvenirs in his house in a specific feng shui to try and <laughs> it's actually feng shui help his son by removing his misfortune. If Toma's identity was- And it was basically that dad accidentally gathered a lot of these relics in such a specific way that Angel Fall spell was executed, right? What the fuck is that? Just my luck? Is, is this Toma's unluckiness? You know, coming to fruition? Like, like dad literally just created Angel- But we weren't even act- We weren't even near dad. Angel Fall was already cast before we were even, you know, meeting Dad. What the fuck is that? The coincidence is crazy. Which changed thanks to Angel Fall, then he would no longer be treated like a plague by others. As the narration states, as the identity of Kamijo Toma would be switched with others, Kamijo Toma wouldn't think that Toya was his father. Not only that, a stranger would become Kamijo Toma and walk around in his own family hmm. as the son. Okay. End quote. Even if the spell affected the entire world and caused an angel to descend from heaven, which Toya probably didn't fully comprehend or think that would happen. He knew nothing of this, right? This is all just a coincidence, right? Due to his lack of magical knowledge, Toya was willing to make sacrifices to help his son. Although due to Imagine Breaker, Toma's identity wasn't swapped, so Toya's plan was pretty much in vain anyway. So he did intentionally do Angel Fall. I thought the anime told us that the relics just happened to be placed in such a precarious way or it just randomly happened. But Aeon is telling me that, no, this was the plan. Dad was very aware of the plan and he fucking did it. Am I crazy? What's going on here? His identity wasn't swapped, so 
Toya's plan was pretty much in vain anyway. This backstory is important as we kinda understand thanks to why a person like Kamijo Toma would help Index in the very first arc. He knows what it's like to be alienated from normal mm. society. That makes a lot more sense, right? Rather than just one simple slice of life moment and sharing a meal and then saving Index for no reason. He himself is an outcast of society. Index is kind of like that. He wants to save or he wants to save himself. And wants to show others that he can actually benefit the lives of others. But Toma lost his memories as a result of saving mm -hmm. Index. By saving her, Toma took the place of Index in a way as Index was the one who was supposed to lose her memories, but it ended up being Toma himself. Yep. So, for the new Toma hearing this, the one that has lost his memories, he also dismisses Toya's efforts to try and cure his misfortune, as Toma says he might be unlucky, as he almost died several times in the previous arcs, and got into some pretty crazy situations against dangerous enemies at the cost of his physical body being beaten up and his mental memories being wiped. However, Toma still showed he can benefit others by saving people in need of help. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Toma versus a guy named Yamisaka Oma, magician. Is this future content? And without Toma, they would arguably have suffered or even does that guy have a bow on his wrist? It looks like a mini crossbow. Died about him. Toma wants to become this image of what he believes is a hero, as it gives him a purpose to do good, despite him being cursed with misfortune. Toma states, If I hadn't been so unlucky, it's true that I could live longer, and I wouldn't have to face the gates of death several times. Kamijo glared at Toya and said, But can that be considered fortune? Mmm, I don't know, maybe if he didn't have these powers, he would have already died, and even though he seems so unlucky, like, yeah, he has surpassed those dire situations thanks to his unlucky power, which I think, I don't know, I think he's super lucky. I think that luck and unlucky is two sides of the same coin. It's all about perspective, and how you think that, it, it's basically both are such, such extreme low odds. And being perceived as like, is this like a good thing happened to me or is this like a bad thing happened to me? Living a normal everyday life so casually and yet not finding out that others are suffering, drenched in blood as mm. they cry for help. Casually living, is this really fortune? It depends on if you think, I don't know, that's ignorance is bliss, right? If you are unaware of this shit, you can just live a casual normal life without this power, then for sure. But let's say that you wanted to pursue the truth and, you know, reality, it, it fucking sucks. And now he has this power that he can use for good and save others. I feel like he's a pretty lucky guy in that aspect. Really, Fortune? That's why, don't stop me. I don't want to be that lucky guy. Instead of living a carefree life and not knowing about the pain of Here the people go. around me. I'd rather be unfortunate and get involved in the pain of those wow. people. Don't think that I'm an unlucky person. I'm the luckiest person in the world. That's the thing, right? Luck and unluck. It's pretty much the same thing. It depends on how you perceive these different situations. And for sure, Tomo does seem unlucky at times. But if you wanted to just live a life of ignorance and think that you can just casually live while every other people are suffering, I don't know. At the end of the day, maybe yourself will be happy, but someone like Toma, he wants to know the truth and facing these problems with this power and confronting, he might just be the luckiest person. End quote. As Toma has no recollection of the terrible consequences of- <laughs> Holy shit, Shimikado versus Toma, bro. It's still so funny how he fucked up the dad too. A look from his childhood that Toya referred to. Toma does not want to let the past determine his actions. He only wants to follow what's inside the current version of him and not let luck get in the way of who he wants to be in life. Toma simply wants to make his own luck and draft a new identity for himself that he can benefit those around him. So Toma doesn't want his bad luck removed as that defines who he is. And for someone clinging onto this new identity, he would lose yet another aspect of himself if he lost that. Toma's bad. So he clings on to it. 
Okay. And luck might get him into dangerous situations, but that gives him a platform to help others when he might have not been able to if he didn't have the bad luck. Yeah, and so he's lucky in that sense. He's lucky that he's able to help each other out. He's unlucky in the sense that all these bad things seem to be happening around him, but he's lucky because he can use his power to solve the situations. Look, and that way he can actually help others, and that's what makes Terma happy, as that's his purpose in life. With his memory loss, Terma... What is this art? Is this light novel art? It seems... Kind of too amateurish to be light novel art, right? Is this fan art? In life. This is light novel art? I'm sorry, man. The art is... It's better than Tower of God Season 1. If, if, you, if you think about Tower of God Webtoon, that art was also fucking trash. It got better later on. This is... I, I, I don't know. I thought it'd be like more professional. Something about this kind of lacks polish. It looks like fan art, but... Yeah, the first novel. It's back in 2004, right? With his memory loss, Terma wanted to be an idealized version of who he wanted to become and who he believed he should become. He didn't want to be a normal person as he can't be a normal person. He's had amnesia, he's got a magic breaker, he's got bad luck, he's being tormented by both the magic and science side, and he has the power. Yeah, it is fucking stupid because like the most recent episode, we're done with the Angel Fall arc by the way. Basically, like, a different person shows up on behalf of, like, a different church, and they're like, oh, shit, the Kamijo faction is, you know, forming because of you. You know, now the church people are after it. It's like, what the fuck? I'm just chilling. I'm just trying to help people out. But simply doing that, more people are gathering around me. I guess the church thinks that we're, like, an opposition threat now. ...to destroy illusions and negate any supernatural ability. It wouldn't be his style to just live a normal life. He wants to be someone who can benefit others and help others as this gives him a purpose in life as wow what a good person maybe at the end of the day guys uh no i was i was gonna say i was trying to do mental gymnastics to justify all the shitty things that the people of toma's hometown village did to him and how toma has now you know grown as a character and without that trauma then he couldn't be this person but since those memories got wiped, I don't think he has any careful connections to that shit. But since it got did get wiped, he clings on to this one thing, which is his identity now, and he pushes forward. Without his memories, Terma was just a blank slate. He had nothing, but this gives him something, and it lets him become the best person he can think of. Anyway, let me know what you think of Terma's past. I hope this... I think Terma's past is incredibly sad and fucked up that the news reporting station would treat this child like this for content that is insanity to me other people throwing rocks at him like he's got he's like a fucking i don't know like a pdf file like what the hell man toma got treated so so bad i'm surprised that he didn't turn out to be like a really shitty person he that's just villain origin stories might prompt you to give the novels a try especially the early old testament volumes where there was a lot of details missed from the novels in the anime and yeah, I just think it's baffling that this wasn't included when it's so pivotal to like who Terma is a, as a character, even though he can't remember this. That it's scene, such man. an important um, way to flesh him out, and we understand Terma a lot more thanks to this. And as even though he, yeah, I guess the anime, you know, JC staff didn't have. I don't know what their planning was with Index, right? I hear. It's a lot of like season three is when it gets really atrocious and there's, there's a lot of stuff cut out, but they just, I guess, didn't think that this is one of the most important things in the limited resources and the time they had to create the anime. So I just, they removed this part. I, I think it's an integral part, but just because I didn't know doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the anime. I mean, the dad did briefly mention exactly what kind of happened, but it's, it's just, it would have been nice to have more depth to the characters through the anime without cutting all this shit out and making it bare bones. Even though he lost his memories and has no recollection of this, like his reaction to hearing this news and trying to explain, like to, to his dad, like who he is and how this shouldn't affect him anymore. Like you don't have to change me. This is who I want to be now. This is my new purpose and new identity in life. I think it's a very strong moment, and Terma yeah. does like call his dad a bastard as well. Like he's absolutely angry at his Damn. dad for for causing such a commotion just just to just to try and help him. I would love to um, see that. 
I guess that's an aspect of Toma, which is in his dad, because his dad wanted to help his son, um, but Toma takes it to the next level. Toma wants to help everyone, but at the same time, Toma Maybe we shouldn't feel so bad that Chimikado is just like fucked up dad. No, I don't. I feel like that scene was still so funny and out of out, just out of left field. Toma doesn't want to help people by causing maybe Toma enjoyed know, it worldwide crisis. Um, <laughs> that that is crazy though. I, I thought the anime maybe I misunderstood it, but in the anime it made it seem like dad had no idea. He just was collecting. He was like resorting to the occult because he was out of ideas of what he could do for his son and angel fall accidentally happened due to the uh random assortment of the things you know and steamy kind of kind of pointed out like the turtle in the bath the different shit going on angel fall was created and i'm here to fucking destroy it and getting you know innocent people involved and you know causing um an apocalyptic event potential apocalyptic event maybe but to us it was peak fan service Seeing all these characters swapped, it actually created for such a funny moment, man. Angel Fall was actually such a fun arc. Actually, like, even Tomo wouldn't go that far. He's he's more more focused on the individuals rather than getting the entire world involved. So yeah, let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see Thank you for the Toma missing backstory, and yeah, there's a lot of more... Kanzaki versus quote unquote Misha scene, right? That scene was also butchered. They just squeeze in so much fucking lore about what Kanzaki is and what angel that Misha could have represented. And they nerfed that shit. The battle was supposed to be way better. But thank you for the video. This was a nice little uh, filling the missing part of our main character's characterizations, why he acts the way he does. Please check out Mr. Aeon of Horses channel. Give the video a like, and I'll see you next time.